Welcome back to the NCR podcast, boys. Well, thanks. <laughs> oh, gee. Oh, thanks. It's been a while. I just had to turn on my noise cancellation. Does it cancel noise for us too? Uh, I don't think so. Just for you. Can it, ca- can it cancel your voice? <laughs> yeah. No. But I can't hear anything other than you guys. That's, That's pretty amazing. sweet. Amazing. Yeah. Oh man. He built for the plane. Yeah, that honestly, like, I don't know a purpose for these other than something like this. Like, imagine running and turning on noise cancellation, like serious threat. You know what I mean? Like, running with headphones oh, yeah. in general. Just, yeah. yeah. Remember but when I you imagine, used to bike with headphones? Yeah, you know what I was thinking about PT? I was like, <laughs> I could probably bike with these things in and PT would never know. <laughs> Why? Because they're so, like, they're they're small, you know? Like, the, I had the cord hanging down last time. Dude, you can notice is, those in two seconds. <laughs> like, no, 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 but, but PT busted me once when I was biking and he was driving. And he was on the other side of the road and he, like, rolled down his window and he was like, you're a fucking idiot or something. He, like, yelled at me. And I oh, remember yeah. that was the day where I was like, I'm never, I'm never doing this again. Oh, you mean the drive-by situation? Yeah. That that incident would never happen again that's true i could use those noise canceling ones when i coach the classes and the gut and the boys are outside of me it's really annoying i had to yeah, like but- literally i snapped snapped on the boys the other day i i don't remember exactly who was in the class but i i felt bad i'm like i just showed everyone a really um different side right there <laughs> The my, my sister, aggressive my, father side. <laughs> yeah, my um, the boys seem to respond to clapping. It's really weird, and I clap really hard, and they like. I swear, my neighbors that I share a fence with, they probably think I I slap my kids, which I don't. But I like I'll like say hi right, and like clap clap, and like th- that's when they kind of. <laughs> that's hilarious. Anyways, I, yeah, that must be a loud clap. It's a very loud clap. It's a very loud clap. That's so funny. All right, boys. So this will be a this will be a good podcast. We'll talk about the CrossFit Games. We'll talk a little bit about SouthFit, but we get uh, some cool perspectives here because, well, Rez is my coach, but Rez has also been to the games on a team, so he's got some insight into that. PTs into the games with Rez on a team but then also a little more recently in 2014 as an individual and this will be my first time at the CrossFit Games so this is going to be a new experience for me and I know absolutely nothing about what I'm getting myself into so basically all the advice that you guys can give me is what I'm going to be taking with me into this experience I've been there before as a judge but it's a little different, yeah. I expect, as an athlete. I could help you out if it was the real game, but now, man, I got nothing for you. 30 guys, 30 girls at the ranch. You know what you do have, PT? You have a, you, out of all three of us, probably have the closest relationship with Dave Castro. That's true. Yeah. You've, do you have more demo team experience than anyone in the world? Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's... Yeah. So there's that's some good insight. I'm just wa- I'm just some waiting into, for a call into how the programming works and all this stuff. Yeah, but I first, first we should. Today. But first we should we should. I mean, people know that we're close, but people should know that of all the years PT has has worked for Dave as a demo team member, and no matter how much Rez and I try and get information out of him, he has never said a goddamn word. Nothing. Nothing. He keeps his lips sealed. So that's because that's because I signed a non-disclosure agreement <laughs> that could that could cost me three hundred thousand dollars. So uh, yeah, no, I I don't say anything. That's the value, eh, of a leaking. I don't remember exactly what it was, but something like that. Maybe I'm in breach of the non-disclosure agreement by just by saying that, but I think it has an expiration every year. <laughs> okay, there you go. Um, I I sign a new one every year. 
Yeah, I was talking I was talking to Pete about this the other day and I was like and and all I can think about is like um so I was at the ranch probably almost a year ago with Dave for the kids summit. Oh yeah, that's right. And like he is so proud of that place. Like and I'm sure you guys like PT probably understands this but he's so proud of that place and like you can tell in that recent video that they posted how excited he is. Like I think this is his perfect scenario for him you know it's like this is my turf it's his turf he gets to do you know what i mean so it's i i'm really excited to see it go down a hundred percent dude it's- yeah there's something super poetic about it where like it started there with basically no fans yeah, yeah. so it's, it's like, now, now yeah. Yeah. yeah and now it's it's like he said in the video it's coming full circle it's yeah you know it takes it because there's no other situation there's no other situation that by choice they would go back there now like for a no. full for a full event like that you know yeah yeah no. maybe for like a few unless, events unless like they did. it was in a real bad spot but yeah yeah but there's no there's no situation where by choice they're planning to host the full games at the ranch like they did back in the day so it's it's mm-hmm. It's kind of it's kind of cool that they're forced to to do that. I was watching some of the old videos of uh, like games replays. I've been doing that a lot lately, and uh, the two thousand nine when they started to get some fans there, and everyone, all the fans are sitting on the hill, and basically the hill is covered with people, and it's almost like a little outdoor coliseum style everyone's looking down on the main area where everyone's lifting it looked yeah. crazy it, it's too bad that's not going to happen but yeah I don't, they, they might be allowed to have like i don't know close by fans you yeah, know who, like who knows what's the is there a limit on the actual number of people that can be there i mean it's going to depend the, on what california comes up with at that moment in time for their sort of like covid limitations right because mm-hmm. you know for example alberta right now can do 50 people outdoors but yeah. i don't i don't know if if california has a number like that yet but i was um i saw in the morning chalk up that they had posted about the different uh professional sports leagues and i think it was like the nba can only have like five people. I, th- I don't yeah. know if those are rules that the NBA have put in place, but they're like only five people on staff can go into a building for any given practice right now. Uh, football, uh, NFL can practice, but it's only 50% of the team can practice. Stuff like that. So That's what's so I complicated think- about the states is, is how, it, how it is. Just state by state yep. governed, right? Mm-hmm. And you have like these sports leagues that are multi states, like yep. just across the country. It's like so. After like yeah, I read Dave's book, and and after reading his book, and just given the local climate on everything happening, I think he's gonna aim to not have any fans there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like like I think yeah. like if he's probably planning it now. And there's going to be no room, like you know, he'll plan the hill. Like there, there won't be any. He's going to plan it with no room for fans. So. I think it's safe to just assume there won't be any fans or it's, anyone. Because there's going to be such little organization compared to like little need for organization compared to when you have a full roster of athletes like last year, plus all the fans and managing those crowds and everything. Like he's just going to be able to drag us through whatever the hell he wants at any at whatever time. Like he's not going to have to plan for, so I've, I've also been teams. thinking about that. I've been thinking about that a lot. And again, another reference to his book, and I'm sure PT will agree with me. Dave's not the type of guy to leave things to the last minute. Yes, a couple of events, he will like, he will like just kind of make a last minute tweak or he'll, he'll do something different last minute. But mm-hmm. for the most part, this dude's got his, his, his shit together long before the games happened. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking about this. I was like, Dave was probably already thinking about a bunch of tests to put these athletes through. And he probably hasn't changed those tests. You know what I mean? He's probably going to do the exact same, some of the exact same stuff that he had planned initially. Yeah, with you guys. Right. Like, it, it's not, yeah, it, you know, it's funny. So, so I, you, I, you guys followed 
PDC, the hunting account, um, the guy's out hunting. Like he killed a turkey and a and a pig in the last I, two weeks. I saw that. <laughs> like the amount of time it takes to do that is you gotta you gotta devote a little bit of time to that. And I couldn't help but think, this guy is not stressed out at all about the game. You know, because initially my mind went to a place like man, imagine, imagine I got a phone call tomorrow saying like the games will be in your backyard. And it's like, Oh geez, I got to get ready. I got to, this guy probably <laughs> already had a plan and he's just going to move that plan to the ranch. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not. Yeah, you, yeah. You're probably right. The other thing with the, the other thing going with what you said is um, I, I heard him in an interview not long ago, talk about how with the lack of regionals and with the, the new date of the open it allows just way more time for the games events planning like he doesn't have to go through regionals and then finish planning the games like he used to he basically has an like a full it's got like eight months to plan the games yeah yeah i'll i'll tell you i'm not worried for one second that it's going to be amazing like <laughs> if, if if dave like just working with him for so so many years and being behind the scenes at the games, like if he has a legitimate okay to 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 do the games with whatever restrictions he has, he'll make it amazing with whatever restrictions he has. Like it's just, and you're right, Rez. He probably he's, he's gonna take some of the workouts that he he already had. He's gonna tweak them. He's gonna make some new ones, and he's just. Like the guy just executes, you know, like you're, you're saying he's not stressed. He's probably not like, he's probably stressed, like very stressed of, of making it happen, but he will make it happen. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm not worried. It's going to be unreal. And obviously it's going to be streamed and it's going to be like, everyone's going to be watching. Everyone's going to be watching. It's, it's a really, yeah. You know, without, without going into like too much detail, obviously last year's games, with all the changes to CrossFit um, and all the question marks that were like leading into it and country winners, how many people that were there actually competing, um, you know, the logistics of that first workout in Madison, um, just everything, everyone, everybody had question marks about how it was going to happen and, and, oh, the games were going to suck, the games were going to suck, the games were still fucking amazing. Like, yeah, yeah. He he has such a team. He has such a team, and he's just like, you know, it sounds like I'm sucking up to him right now, but it's just, it's true, man. Like, after seeing how he runs his ship for the games, like, he'll just do the same thing. It'll be in his backyard with 60 athletes and a couple cameras, and it's just going to, it's going to be badass. And he's probably going to work with Rogue, like we were talking about, work with Rogue to have some shit delivered, and it's going to be good. Yeah. He's done it for so many years that at this point, it's just like, he's got it covered. Yeah. Man, I was thinking about, I was just envisioning doing the workouts at Aromas and looking back at some of the old games, events that have taken place there. The entire games is going to be outside. Yeah. yeah. You're not, you're not going to go indoors for a single thing unless it's like, unless they put one bar in the middle of the room and you do a clean ladder like they did last year at the games. Yeah. He'll probably just make, he'll, he'll get like Zeus delivered there or something. Yeah. 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 Just put it up in the, in that main little parking lot area. You might I've put actually up never even been to the ranch. You guys have both been, I've never even been. Really? Yeah. I've never seen the ranch in 2016 when they sent all the athletes there for that, hill run and deadlift we're like we're close to going i remember there's like thought of like hey do we have room on this plane for for the demo team and then we we, we didn't so we just stayed behind <laughs> we watched we watched it on the computer in pat sherwood's room but uh <laughs> uh yeah no i've never seen the ranch so okay. i don't know like how big it is inside like could it hold heat to five maybe i don't know you guys in tell me inside it's a medium sized box it's like it's probably wow. actually well it's probably the size of the full square footage it might be close to our upstairs smaller i would say really yeah like seven thousand square feet 
Yeah, maybe. I don't know. There's also like that whole uh, classroom that takes up a lot of room now. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, there's a big classroom. That, that wasn't in the older videos. And yeah, stuff. there's kind of like a permanent classroom in there now with like a little stage and stuff. I I could pick I could picture that being like the athlete warm up area. That that would make sense to me for yeah. the athletes. Like that would that would. Yeah, warm that's up. That's about it. Cool down. Little spot to get out of the sun for a little bit. Yeah. There's no doubt that Rogue will friggin' soup that place up. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting without fans. Yeah, that was one of the questions we got, eh? Yeah, we got we got a couple questions, but one of them was basically I think Ryan. Ryan was wondering about the fans and how that's gonna affect affect athletes. I mean personally, like I don't everyone's on the on the same playing field now without the fans there there's no doubt that it sights you up like if you if you walk up to a bar and you need to do you know 15 unbroken reps to win a workout and you're going head to head with someone and the crowd is in your face just screaming as loud as possible like you're not putting the bar down like it's a it's an absolute guarantee every single time you know and so now there's no fans there's none of that and it's just basically you need to find it within yourself to battle against that person it's a little bit more like a a gym setting you know like at, at yeah. home when you're with your training partners kind of thing except you know they're not your training partners they're their competitors which will obviously still fire you up i don't know what it's going to feel like it's going to be different yeah i, I, mean, I, it's, I it's, it's tough to say because it's nothing anybody's ever experienced yeah you know it's yeah. like you can say you can say how much the fans help you in a competition setting, but then have you ever really been in a competition setting with Without thirty that. other guys, thirty other guys that want to rip your throat out? No, it's true. Without it, you know. Yeah. So it's like I I think I don't think there's going to be a huge difference. No. And it's not like one guy feeds off the crowd more than another. Yeah. Although the, you know maybe maybe some guys do. I imagine a guy like Matt Frazier doesn't give a shit. No. If there's anybody there, no. Uh, I, I hate if, if, either, if com anything, either this... competing, yeah, competing or watching. He doesn't care. Yeah, he's he's just gonna win, you know. Yeah. So it's like, and or, or he'll come really close to winning if he doesn't. But um, yeah, it's. I think it'll be a cool experience that you'll only be able to like. You'll be able to say Pete at the end, like, hmm. Yeah, you're right. There was no fans there. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I, yeah. it's it's so in the moment stuff that it's like, you know, could I have done five more pounds if there were fans? Who knows? Who cares? Right? Mm -hmm. It's just like, I, I, in the moment, I don't think you'll realize it that much. The pandemic has almost so, prepared athletes for that a little bit. If you're training at home by yourself, like I mean, I know yeah. I at the start of this whole thing, I know I've had a friggin' tough time trying to get going now. Now I feel like I'm hitting a serious groove of being able to train at intensity alone. I don't, you know, it's still better to train with you guys, but for a while there, there was a, there was days or weeks where it was just a mental battle to try to get into my basement and get any kind of intensity. I think that yeah. just building that up is kind of, it's a good thing. I think going into a setting like that. For sure. The uh, I think that the curse and the dilemma of of being extremely fit is that you're basically always training by yourself. Like think yeah. of Velner. Like yeah. okay, he's training in a gym full of people, but is he actually training with them? No, it's true. No. Like he doesn't think about them for one second, you know. And it's like yeah. unless so I'm and I'm thinking like a lot of the top guys. Like it's 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 rare now that that some of them train together. Yeah, but even like you know, you know I, w there's plenty of workouts in training over the years that I've done by myself. But still, at, at NCR, even in the open gym area, if I'm hitting snatches or I'm doing bike erg and burpees, I know someone's watching me, and I'm like giving it a little extra because I'm like, okay, these guys are here right now; they're watching me. I don't want to look like I'm yeah. slacking here. It's just a definitely just a little edge. You know, yeah, just a little edge, for but, sure. but it's a learn. it can be a learned skill. I think like I, you know, I think I never, ever trained at home, never. And 
it's been a learning process. And now that I sort of have some of that experience, training at home isn't as much of an issue for me anymore, if at all. Like, you know, I, now I can, I can just grind any, anything and I can feel like I'm going as hard as I would in any other setting, I think. Do you uh, think that's, that's funny you say that, Pete. Do you think it's because now you know you're going to the game? It could very well be. You know, and now there's just like, a, there's a mindset switch. It's like, I don't give a shit if I can't find intensity. I have to find it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, given the circumstances right now, okay, now I'm, I'm, it's official. I'm going to the CrossFit Games. Yeah. I'm going to be with 29 other absolute savages. Yeah. So if I'm not finding intensity by myself in the basement, then. Yeah, then I might know. as well fucking throw the towel in. <laughs> like, exactly. So that, that's, that's, it's good. It's good, but it could just very well be just absolute mindset. There. It definitely is that. I mean, even to motivate myself just to start a workout, that is what I tell myself. Like yeah. I, you know, yesterday we went to the gym, we, we trained a little bit together and Jen came and before we left, I was like, I looked at the stuff res ed program for me and I was like, oh man, I got a bunch of stuff to do here. I'm not going to get it all done, but I should do something right now before we leave. So I hit the sandbag run workout. Then I came home and I coached a class, put Johnny to bed and I was like, fuck, if I don't do something else, then half the stuff won't get done at all this week. So I went, forced myself to go downstairs, hit a, you know, hit thrusters and biking, you know, hit it hard. I just started it. But as soon as I was in it, I was like, okay, got to step up the intensity a little bit here. Like you're going to the fucking games. (laughs) Yeah. That, that mental battle of like forcing yourself to train right now must be, must be so different so different than like normal circumstances yeah it is a little bit and it's more motivating at the gym at and at weird hours of the day because there's people around you also training like when i'm at home and i put johnny to bed and i coach a class at 6 p.m i'm done at 6 30 and jen's upstairs and she's got dinner ready it's so easy to just be like ah, i just feel like eating dinner you can just you just walk up the stairs and sit at the table and you're eating like a warm meal you know, mm. but then it's like almost 7 p.m. But as soon as I started, I was like, okay, that was worth it. As soon as I started, I was like, okay, I'm going to be done this thing in 20 minutes. That's nothing. You know, I'm going to go upstairs, have a nice recovery meal, and that's that's it. I used to absolutely hate doing that, man. At the gym, if I was coaching an evening class, and I had a little extra to do, I would often do that. I would just, I'd be like, okay, this workout's going to take me 15 minutes. If I start this now, it won't even make a difference at what time I'm leaving the gym. Basically, I'm literally just going to jump into this and rip this as hard as I can, you know, and that'd be like 7 PM and, and and it'd be worth it. So I just have to have that same mindset now for the next two months straight, you know, just, just do it. Just put the work in. Yeah, then it's, you do, you do. And then it's like, am I just doing it because I'm doing it? Or am I doing it with a purpose, you know? Mm-hmm. I think am I just that, doing it because, but I, what you're saying is like, as soon as you get started, you're like, yeah, hey, I'm in this. I'm yeah, exactly. As I, yeah, as I, exactly. As I can. Yeah. But if, if it can help you to just get started by saying like, I'll just do it, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I think, again, that's like, I think you, it's valuable to just force yourself. I mean, especially if there's, if you have a competition coming up in the future where you know at some point you need to start training and increasing the volume a little bit and getting that intensity, like just starting to work out whether or not there's that intensity getting the ball rolling and just getting used to that routine of starting the workout, starting the workout, starting the workout. Okay. Now starting the workout is second nature. Now I can start thinking about going as hard as I need to, to, to see some benefit out of these things, you know, and getting that ball rolling. I think that was just starting the workout was where I was when the pandemic started. (laughs) Yeah. Now it's like, you know, I can get some intensity out of these, which is, which is good. But you'll never do a workout in half of it anyways. 
you know what I mean? Like, no, you start and you're just like, okay, fuck this. So yeah, I mean, it's easy. It's easy once you get going, especially you now that you have like that concrete goal. Like you're in a workout and you're you're a competitor enough to not dog it or to know when you're to know when you are or to yeah. know when you can give more. You know. Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this, Rez? You're a little quiet back there. Oh yeah, I'm just I was letting you guys <laughs> chat. You guys had a good good thing going. What uh, uh what I mean, yeah, you... we kinda talked we we've kinda talked about this stuff in the last podcast, right? That three two one go hits and it's switch goes off and it's... No, it's true. Yeah. What Rez, do you have um we talk a little bit about about uh like our programming. But yeah maybe for the sake of the podcast, you can elaborate. Like you're, you're basically just programming. You're programming everything for me leading up to the games. So, yeah. I, think it'd be, it'd yeah. be inter- so I think it'd be interesting for people to hear kind of what your mindset is when you're thinking about programming stuff for me. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So before, you know, you came back from self fit, we took, we took it easy for a bit, just kind of relaxed. And then our game plan was to get real strong and, towards the end of that strength phase uh covid hit and then um yeah i've never really talked about this before but like i in my head there was no way you were going to the crossfit games like i was like it's over like that's not happening (laughs) and then and then i had to start programming for the gym which was it's weird because it's it's super simple like that you know what i mean like the programming we're doing now is is pretty basic stuff but it, it just it hurt my head and that's why I kind of came to you guys for help. Like I was like, I was like, I need, I need, you know, feel free to write in workouts. Cause it was, I don't know why I was having a hard time with it. Like I'm a, I'm an organized guy and I like to have my, my shit together. And then this just threw a wrench and all that. So then, so I was kind of like a little, uh, like having a hard time with programming for that. And then, um, and, and then CrossFit came out and they made a post saying like, we're going to try our best to do this. And that's when you and I talked beat and we were like, okay, let's, let's try to get back on the train. And then, yeah. So we were, I was like, okay, well the day, the day to the games will still be the same. Where would we be if COVID never happened? We'd still be, we'd be wrapping up that strength cycle. So that's, that's kind of where we, we started. We, you know, we together, we kind of, we came to the conclusion that there's some things that you got to hit always, right? Like the back squats, like we got to, uh, we got to hit back squats heavy twice a week. Um, and then we also kind of just established where your fitness was at right now. And like your conditioning's not where it's, it's not peak by any means. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, in the past, like two, three weeks, like I've, I've kind of found like, it's, it's, I'm just like, let's, let's, you know, if, I'm, it's just, I'm bringing it back to, let's say COVID wasn't here. And that's, we, Pete and I have been talking and that's kind of where we're at in terms of training. Like last week, um, it's funny because we have a group chat with Glenn, the four of us. And uh, Glenn was like, bring all your stuff to the gym. I'm like, that's exactly what I told you. Mm-hmm. What was it last week we chatted? And I'm like, you got to bring all your gear to the gym. Yeah. Like you just got to, you got to get your shit to the gym. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so, so now it's just, now it's like we're, we're basically doing what we had set out to do at the beginning of the year, you know? Yeah. Um, Does uh, I'm, we have, we haven't talked about this, so I don't even know the answer to this, but are you viewing the prep for the CrossFit games any different from the prep for South fit? Like leading into South fit, obviously there was a game plan and there was, you know, there was preparation that took place and we had some different phases we went through, but is it any different for the games or is it just straight up? I mean, cause when I do workouts that you program for me, like it just, it just feels like shit that I suck at, you know, it's just a lot of weakness work and et cetera. But are you, do you have a different mindset when you're programming knowing that a a little bit, a little, a little bit. So like, um, for South Fit, we knew the workouts quite like we had about a what a two week window before the, the like they gave us two weeks. Yeah, yeah, they started announcing them I think two weeks before. So so we had a little bit of time to kind of play with things, but like um yeah, I mean more or less yes. Given what we know about the 
like what the games will look like this year, there are some things that like, you know, like the whole, I'm not going to be inside. Like that's, that's going to, that's going to be specifically tailored to, to a lot of the stuff you do. Um, those kinds of things, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think, I don't think Dave's going to not use that hill often. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I think it's a good idea to be prepared, but, but essentially, yeah, man, I think like, I think you were at peak fitness, like you were strong, like you, you snatched what, was it 259, 55? Yeah, 255 or 257 or something like that. Yeah, it was like, it was like a weird number, but you know, for you, that's like a good, that's a good snatch, you know, like the, there was, was a in, thruster workout. Five minutes, it was a five minute, to, it was just a five minute workout. It was after a 20 minute AMRAP and then you had five minutes to hit a max snatch. Yeah, and there was there was the thruster workout, the thruster rope climb thing, that that like you did really well at, and typically that's not a Pete Shaw workout, right? You won it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it was thr thrusters and those weird rope climbs where you couldn't. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm the typically touch and go ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm decent at both those movements, but it's not like a in the bank workout. You're right. Yeah, I mean, like you know, if if I if I put you against the top 30 athletes in, in mm -hmm. the, even, even let's say you, me and PT and it's like 30 thrusters at 95 pounds for time. Like our cycle speed is just like, I mean, PT is like twice as fast as both of us, but yeah. you know, you're tall, you're a big guy. You got to no. move up and down. And, and the sure. fact that you won that workout and a, a rope climb when you're a heavier guy too. Right. So yeah. like, I would say your fitness, the, the point I'm trying to make is that self fit you, you were like peak fitness and that's exactly, you know, with the exception of a little, little tweaks here and there, like that's exactly where we'd want you, if not better. Mm -hmm. But the rope climb thruster, Pete, you smashed that at regionals. Yeah, I, I did. I smashed, I came fifth in that workout, but yeah, that, that was, a, was, that was that, a really heavy thruster. And yeah, it was a rope climb with yeah. your feet. That's right. It was a rope climb with my feet and it was a very heavy thruster. So you'd think that going 95 pounds with the, with the barbell and making a legless just with my size, that it would give me a disadvantage but it's it turned out okay for whatever reason yeah for whatever reason i'm half decent at, at legless rope climb so that seemed to work out but you're right you'd think that someone a little lighter with the same skills could come out on top i i was just on a mission that was the second last workout of the weekend and i was like uh, honestly I, yeah i i think that's i think that workout is where you won outfit. like winning that, that workout on, sunday morning right that was sunday, morning? Su sunday uh What was Sunday morning? Because there, there were three workouts on the last day. The so long ago. <laughs> yeah, the first workout on Sunday was, I think it was the deadlift handstand walk pistol workout. Yeah, because I lost my lead. Uh, going yeah. So at the, at the beginning of each day, I'd come into the day with a lead, with the first, yeah. with first place. And that first workout on Sunday was pistols, deadlifts, um strict handstand push-ups and then also a handstand walk like the the handstand push-ups transition into like handstand walking and stuff and and that was I your lost, worst workout that was yeah that was my worst workout yeah. and i lost i lost the lead by a bunch of points and then so I, yeah, there were two I, workouts left and they cut the field for each of them and so the point spread changed a little bit and i had won both workouts in that just it boosted well, we did that's a, yeah that's a big sunday that's a tough sunday yeah that was, that was tough. A three <laughs> those are three big workouts yeah so i think like um i think at that point like you you came 13th i think in that uh yeah. handstand push-up workout I and i right. refer to it as the handstand push-up workout because that's that was the part of the workout that really killed you yeah dude people um, were coming so fast off those strict handstand push-ups and i remember it, they didn't have mats it was literally handstand push-ups guys on just hard ground it was like concrete and so i was coming down and smashing the top of my head on this like hard just like a hard mat and uh and, and i had get, like i was like bleeding on my head but didn't you get to kip the second set yeah so it was strict on the first kip the second and the last one was just a handstand walk all the way down so you were doing that on the concrete you were kipping on the concrete yeah, I don't think it was concrete. It was just hard, hard mat. It was like black oh, mat. Just imagine hard black mat. Yeah, it was. But so, so you, you, 
like you basically gave up a lot of points on that one. Yes. And then like so from the outside looking in, and I, think, I don't know if we had, I, I think Crouch might have won that too or come close to it. Yeah, like like you you the way it was set up after that workout was like there's no way Pete's going to win. You know, there's no way. Like he's not going to win the thruster rope climb workout there's no way like jay crouch is like a little dude he's gonna smash that whatever and then like you won that and then at that moment i was like okay like pete's gonna win the whole thing it's so possible first yeah well it it, did you know the the last last workout workout, at that point yeah we did we did the last workout and it was like pete there's no way pete doesn't win that it was all machines remember there's two machines toto bar which is a strong gymnastics movement for me and clean, hang and power cleans at, at 135. Yeah. Which it was like, what, hold on and rip. Just something? hold on. It was 25. It was 25 of each. Yeah, 20. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was 20. like, okay. But then, then we didn't know the whole, and it was weird. Like, Jay finished right behind you, and we didn't know what they were doing with the points. So there's this big suspense thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, people were losing their minds. People were texting texting me nonstop. Yeah. they had yeah because they had cut for that last one so for the thruster rope climb they cut a full heat because there were only three heats all weekend they called a full heat of guys the the points uh changed a little bit there and then they cut another full heat but no one knew how they were going to change the points again they whether it would be the same as the last event or whatever anyway it took it took so long it basically i didn't know that i'd won until i was like standing on the podium almost <laughs> yeah the the interview was really funny your interview with pablo was like because he was saying you won it you won it but yeah he, you, you won the last event yeah yeah. He's like i won i won and then because it wasn't it hasn't come out and then no. as you're yeah. in that interview spencer texted me when you were in that interview spencer texted me he said your boy won really yeah oh, so, so you and knew I, was, I yeah i was well Again, I was like, does he know, does he, like, is it official? Or, does he know for I, sure, I, yeah. But he, wasn't he there? Was Spencer there? Yeah, Spencer was there. Okay, so there you go. And then um, I was with uh, Doobie because we had our seminar in Ottawa, remember? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, yeah, we were, just, we were watching that, and then it was like, okay, hey, well, he actually fucking did. He, oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put a nickel in the jar. For those of you who are listening, I got, Felix on, I got Felix on my lap and I said a bad word. And he said, don't say that. Um, you know what's cool? What's really cool about, about Southfit is the fact that Hamplan programmed it. Yeah. Because it, all those workouts, it was a cool, it was a well-rounded test. In, not just because of Hamplan, but also because the fact is we could go outside and swim. We got a chance to do a running and pull up workout on the beach. So that I feel like just their insight because they've been part of seminar staff for so long and they, they've really value well-rounded, well-rounded CrossFit. It's not biased. They try, they try as hard as possible to not be biased in any way. I I feel Mm -hmm. like that just experiencing that prepared me also like in a good they don't way. try to they don't try and reinvent the wheel right no. like that's something yeah. that we see a lot of in competition these days where it's like <laughs> dubai oh, man, man. dubai yeah. dubai they were doing some funny things like well yeah it's, it's, it's just not just dubai it's just like every sanctioned event is just trying to like yeah last year i just felt like they were all try, just trying to be the sanctioned event you know yeah. with like the coolest implements but and plan just came in and they just programmed like a CrossFit event, you know? Yeah. I don't know how, how much of it was actually changed by the event. I remember like, cause I knew a couple of the workouts before Yep. and uh, they were, they ended up being changed like at the last second, maybe for like the venue or whatever, but essentially the, the, the core of the workout stayed the same. Yeah. You know? I know there was and one, uh, I know I was talking to James. One of them was, one of them, I think they, they put rowing in the 20 minute and wrap and, st- and versus just burpees and double unders, which obviously I'm happy about any kind of row. Yeah. That was five rounds. That was a long workout. Yeah. No one no, finished yeah. it. No one finished it. You did, no one, didn't you? No, 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 no. Nobody finished that workout. It was basically a 20 oh. minute AMRAP. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I got to oh. the last, I got to the last set of, it might've been, no, it's three rounds. There's three rounds PT. Okay. That thousand meter row, hundred double unders and 30 burpee facing box jump overs. Nasty. And Nasty. I forget the exact cap. I, I think it was 20 minutes, but every, like a bunch of guys made it to the last set of burpees. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. I just remember being on that rower and looking side to side and seeing like to my right, there was just this animal on the rower. I think it was the guy who ended up coming third. And I was like, how the hell is this guy holding this? Like I need to fucking saddle up here. And no one in this field can be a better rower than me right now. I need to. And I just gunned it. Cause, and I, every single time I would get off that rower ahead, but basically because that guy was rowing so fast, I, I just told myself I had to row faster. And then I would get to the burpees and, and then Crouch and him would, would, would creep up, would creep up, creep, creep up, and then get back to the roar. That, that was, we had planned for that, right? It was like recover on the burpees, basically. Yeah. Smash yeah. the row and chill on the burpees. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, okay, I got, a qu- I got some questions here from, uh, from Kelly Morrissey. Let's get a conversation going about this stuff. Um, what, oh, this is something that actually, I saw in morning truck up, there was a little bit of, uh, of controversy and we talked, they elaborated about on that today. Yeah. Yeah. Read that? No, yeah. Who elaborated on it? The morning chalk up. Oh yeah. Like they exactly. talked about that. Yeah. But what we were talking at the gym yesterday about that comment about personal safety and stuff, Kelly says, what, if any concerns do you have about travel or personal safety during this time? Basically, am I concerned about, about COVID? I mean, I'm not really. I mean, I'm going to be safe. I'm going to travel. Are you going to wear a mask on the plane? Yeah, I'll wear a mask on the plane. Basically, all the stuff that's coming out on the in you know in the provinces and you hear on the radio and the evidence now is like if you're in a situation where you are finding yourself within two meters of somebody, like you can't do social distancing effectively, like wear the mask. So I have a I have a mask and I'll I'll bring it and I'll wear it like when I'm traveling. So what if, what if you what if you I'm just gonna be a shithead right now. Yeah. What if you post up to the games and Dave's like got you guys lined up in heats and you're nice and close to one another? I'm not gonna do it for that. Okay. I'm oh, not I gonna, gonna I'm, not gonna, what, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wear. Put, oh, make well, imagine it imagine they may. Yeah, I thought I thought of that. What if what if at the games? What if California says? You have to wear a mask at this event, buddy. Should we do a couple of runs with the mask on or something like that? No, that's that's not hey, healthy. Listen, if if surgeons can perform uh, life changing or life saving surgeries with a mask on, you can do a couple thrusters with the mask. Yeah. <laughs> imagine imagine Dave throw in throw in one of those like you know the workout masks that I you used to wear, like oh, as like an event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm but not, I mean, the, the, the I'm not travel, concerned about it though. I'm not concerned. Tra- about it. Yeah. I mean, the travel concerns are basically you're at the mercy of, of what the border says. And, mm-hmm. and then, then they just extend it to June 21st, the travel ban. Yeah. Yeah. They did. They did. They extended it. To, yeah. Yeah. A month. June 21st. So, I mean, and then from June, you still have a month and 10 days and you were yeah. saying that you even, you even looked into even if the ban was still in, you would still possibly be eligible to, to cross. Yeah, there's a case to be made. Like no one's being yeah. forced to stay at home right now. It's all just highly recommended. recommended. Yeah, it's highly recommended. And they're saying all, they're saying non-essential and essential. And, the, and there's like some examples of those categories, but they've only given examples of the most extreme versions. It's like, okay, essential travel is if you're transporting human organs and then non-essential travel is vacation you know so it's like if you can make a case that your travel is essential for whatever reason i think that they might be nice about it but we'll cross that i was th- get to it. i was thinking of a guy like bjorgvin from iceland like iceland's such a small country yeah i feel like it, it wouldn't even be the americans not letting bjorgvin it'd be like the the yeah, Iceland, Iceland. Yeah. You know, Icelandic government just be like, we don't want you to go to California. What if you come back with it? You know, I like, think that's kind of what Australia was doing for a little bit. Australia and New Zealand, right from the beginning, were t- they talked about doing sort of this 
making their own little bubble in the Pacific there. And uh, yeah, I don't, they were just not you, letting you're people definitely, out. I'm, I'm actually looking at the list right now. You know, you have, so Lefteris banned for drug use. Um, and then you got yeah. Bjorgvin. Bjorgvin from Iceland. You have Baden Brown from Australia. Yeah. Roman, who can't go to the games anyways because of visa issues. And then you got Janikowski from Finland. And that's it. And then if you go to the sanctional, if you go to the sanction events, there's, there's Con Porter, Australia. Um, okay. Jay Crouch, Australia. All right. And Jay Crouch is coming. That's cool. Yeah, he won the Australian Open. That's right. Australia is it the Open? Australian Open? I don't know. Australian Classic or something like that. One of the last ones to 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 actually happen. It was like the second last one, I think, to actually to actually go on. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, it it would it wouldn't be that far fetched to like, you know, you might not get thirty guys there. You might yeah, have less yeah. than thirty guys. Yeah, you know? yeah, just because of and the travel that's, issues. That's just that's just uh, males. If you look at females, I feel like females are even more international than guys. Oh my God, look at this. Iceland, Iceland. Uh, where's Kristen Holte from? She's like, Norway. No. Yeah, Norway. She's, probably li so Iceland, she's not living in the States? Okay. No, she's not. Okay. So, Kia is, but then Jamie Simmons, yep. you know, Emma McQuaid. Oh my yeah. God. You get, uh, That's actually pretty cool. It's actually um, pretty cool to see if you look at the leaderboards for Saunders. the girls. It's so, it's so international. Yeah, Car Saunders, and then this Swedish girl, and then uh, Polish girl. Wow. Anyways. Yeah. No. It's it's. I mean, I hope everyone can show up. It'd be. But no, you're right. And I mean, to answer the safety thing, I think it's just like I don't feel unsafe i don't feel unsafe for myself i would just i would just make sure that when i come back home i quarantine myself for two weeks you know i think that that's kind of a going to be an ongoing requirement for most international travelers anyway yeah right and then you know if you do catch covid you can or if you have any signs or symptoms of it then you get you can hopefully try and get over that alone in your house <laughs> before uh before you go out and about your life, but I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to, I'm ready to quarantine myself for two weeks so I can go to the games. You quarantine yourself for a year if it means you go to the games. Yeah, it's, it could be, it might be true. As yeah, long as, as long as I can still, like, I'll just, yeah, a, exactly. What a, what a it, price to pay. I won't see anyone for two weeks, but I get to go to the CrossFit games at the ranch in Aromas, the COVID games. Yeah. You know, see you later. When Rez and I were talking that, it might be tricky if I have to quarantine myself for two weeks in California before the games with whatever rules yeah. they come up with. That could be a little tricky. Yeah. So you fly to Cali, hang, like chill in a hotel room for two weeks, compete, come home, chill in a hotel room for two or chill at home for two weeks. Yeah. I think I'm, I, I, I've never heard of that. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, I mean, every, like, that's what it's like. Right now, well, like, like, look at Andrew Platter. Andrew moved to Luxembourg. He's got to work out of his home for two weeks. He started a new job. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so right. Same so with the, the the quarantine is not necessarily just coming back home. It's going somewhere. Yeah, it's just like people yeah, because, because every, everyone is yeah. making their own rules about basically protecting their their citizens and their and their health system. They want to make sure that basically because if you're traveling, you're more susceptible because of just the nature of, of the conditions of travel. You're in enclosed spaces. You're close to people who have been from all over the world. You're, right. you're coming from a different country, right? Yeah. Imagine Dave was just like, okay, cool. I'm going to set up some tents. And if you need to quarantine when you come here, just come to the ranch. Come spend two weeks here. Boom. Yeah. I, I was thinking, I'm like, I wonder if, I'm sure I could find someone who'd be willing to let me just quarantine somewhere with some equipment. I don't know. Oh my like, God! Yeah, hundred percent. It would be necessary. That'd be so cool if Dave did that. Yeah. I mean, it it might actually be a a reality. Like that might very well be what he they do. That makes yeah. the most yeah. sense, right? Like. 
Like yeah. what else? What else would you expect you guys to do? Lock yourself in a hotel, like do dumbbell workouts in a hotel for two weeks? Well, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that. Yeah. But you know, we never because, know, too, right? Like that, that, that might be, that might not be a thing, right? No, exactly. Yeah. What are you supposed yeah, to like, do? Just do dumbbell workouts and bike workouts for for two weeks, like Belmer's been doing yeah. in, his, in this little apartment with a loadable loadable dumbbell. I'd like to know what he was, he's what he, if he's starting he to ramp gym. it up at all. Yeah, yeah he was in a gym the other day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, in Vancouver, they've opened up a lot of stuff now. That's, so. Yeah, Victor, he's in Victoria, but or Nanaimo, which is on the island, right? So yeah, I think they're they're in this. Uh, BC's opening up. BC put uh, they put gyms. Actually, I was talking to Scally, and he said that on in Vancouver they were never actually forced to close down gyms hmm. never forced to close but uh a lot of gym owners just decided to do it anyways okay well were, are yeah. were gyms in ottawa ever forced to close yeah like we could have gotten fines okay right? i was i didn't know that i don't know well at one point it was just like all non-essential businesses and then they made a list of essential businesses and if you were just not on that list then you had to shut down yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, but, yeah, I think I think gyms are opening back up over there, so he'll be able to train. It's also like, you know, as quickly as quickly as COVID came and and messed things up, it it might be just as quick to turn around. You know what I mean? Like even in the last week here in Ottawa, like it seems like things have changed pretty significantly. So yeah, yeah, which is who interesting knows, because. Right? It's interesting because literally nothing changed really from from two days ago I, in terms of like the actual virus and what's around us, but our perception yeah. of it has because we're allowed to move a little bit more. And like when I drove to the gym yesterday, I'm like, this city's buzzing. Like there's traffic. Like are we back to normal? Like what's going on? You know? So like realistically, nothing actually changed from 24 hours ago. But now, boom, we're allowed to, to like – do a little bit more so it's it's interesting because the perception of like what we have and and what's going on is what dictates like how we feel you know what i mean without For getting sure. like, super yeah, yeah. deep no 100 percent. it's just like but it's like when this all started i wasn't afraid of it at all and yeah. then from one day to another when like shit got serious like oh my god now this now i actually think this is a real threat yeah so like what you're saying is like from one day to another maybe we're just like oh this is nothing okay cool back to normal boom yeah which yeah is, exactly which, yeah yeah it's funny you say that i i think about that almost every day man i'm just like i went from like living a totally normal life to having this fear that was generated by social media basically like i'm not i'm not saying that covid's not a real thing i'm, I'm saying it's a real thing but like social media media in general like created this wave of fear amongst all of us like we we gotta we gotta you know do this do that do this do that yeah. and like they're they're kind of controlling and then it's i mean now it's not so much social media like the government's coming out and letting things open but it's just like it, it's crazy the perception that it creates it's all unknowns yeah. it's just so much unknown with this thing is that you know from day to day when you're making those decisions it's like it seems like it's a snap it seems like it's okay, now you can do this. And it's like, it's no different from fucking the day before. But, you know, they're waiting for data to accumulate. They're waiting for things to either happen or not happen in terms of breakouts. And then it's like, okay, we've gone, you know, two weeks without this, this certain number of cases. Now it's, now it's okay to open up these stores. And they, it's just how they justify it. I don't know. Yeah. How well, I mean, let's, and who the let's, fuck knows if that's the right way to go about it anyway? But for the sake of you going to the games, let's you know, I what well, you know, let's just hope that things uh, open up a little bit more, and that you know, I I think again, I know nothing, I'm an idiot, but I think that moving towards the games, the path to the games will become a little bit easier. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like travel will open up yeah. a little bit more, and and everything will just you know maybe that two week window will will turn to a one week window or maybe a couple yeah. of days who knows but the timing of it is is in, in just 
from me, spec completely speculating the timing of the games in terms of where it falls on the calendar is almost perfect because yeah, I agree because there everyone now is talking about a second wave is super inevitable. And if you think of the pace at which things are opening up right now, it's pretty slow. So maybe things will be most open towards the end of the summer. And then we're going to see cases start to rise again towards the fall. And then we're going to see another shutdown or something. So it might, we might luck out and, and that it's actually on the calendar in the perfect spot that we can actually go and do this thing. And back to virtual classes. Back to virtual classes. No, no, no. We can't, we can't do another shutdown, guys. I don't give, I don't give a shit about. Let's not think about it. (laughs) Yeah. Let's not think about this. Oh my God. Any other, any other thoughts on the games? No, I, I was just looking at back at Kelly's questions and I think, you know, without addressing them, we answered all of them indirectly. Yeah. She asked one about hopes. Like, is there anything you're afraid of or anything you're hoping for? That's the only one we didn't really touch on. Any and, and maybe like, maybe she's talking more like movement specific stuff. Yeah. I mean, Obviously, everyone, you always hope for like your strengths, and I'm good at rowing. So, if there's a really great big rowing workout, obviously, I'd love to see that. But I think the I think any CrossFit Games competitor is going to tell you that their goal is to not hope for anything. Because if you go into a, an event like that hoping for something, then you've got you've got a strength, you know, you've got a weakness, and that's not that's not going to bode well for you. Usually, people don't even make it that far. That they don't make it to that level, right? That hope yeah. for, because every, every test is pretty complete. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What's what I, what I'm hoping for is a hopper workout. That'd be cool. That'd be kind of sick. Bring it back to the very beginning and get the hopper and just do, I looked up the, some of the first, like the very first hopper workout. Um, it was like, it was a buy-in of a thousand meter row. And then it was like five rounds of 25 kipping pull-ups and seven uh, shoulder to overhead with like a one. 2007. Yeah, one. They, re- they redid that one. They redid yeah, they that one it. in 2013. Was that the, yeah, was that the one? Yeah. They called it 2007. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And in 2007, Brett Marshall won that workout because there was a, 125 pull-ups and, and he's he the only one who did a butterfly. butterfly. Yeah. yeah. Did they do it the you know, same same weight? Was it 155? I think it was 135. 135. It's, it's... Pete, I'd like yeah, to comment. Did. Yeah, what's up? I'd like to comment on one thing that you might not be looking for. Um, a workout, fight gone bad style, calorie rope, box jump, and push-ups. What about, oh, because you beat me in that workout? and. <laughs> <laughs> Reza Mashkuri coming in hot with a win last week. Oh when these guys, God. when these guys beat me at something, or when I beat these guys at anything, which almost never happens, um, I make sure they remember it. Yeah. Well, let's yeah, just well, let's. I mean, that's cool and all, but you you beat Pete in that workout. Yeah. No, I didn't beat you, PT. Okay. Just to clarify. And we we won't we won't talk about your push up standards. Or mine? Or bad. No, Pete Rez's. Oh, Rez's. Who coached that? I think PT coached it. Could you see me doing push-ups? No, that was a day I everyone even, disappeared. I don't need to I watch your push-ups. Push-ups. I don't need to watch your push-ups to know that they're shit. Dude, people, people disappear. Any, any push-up workout, I don't see anybody for half the workout on the virtual class. <laughs> That's on the like floor. A, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it, it's actually a game I play with the CrossFit kids virtually. It's like... I'll say a magic word and they have to like disappear from the screen as fast as they can. <laughs> That's great. That's really funny. The the magic word for our classes is three, two, one, go today. Four hundred meter run to start the workout. You're just by yourself yeah, like yeah, a minute. Yeah, and a half. yeah exactly. <laughs> That's where it comes in handy to have the music. Yeah, true. You just jam out while you're waiting for everyone to come back. Yeah. Okay, final right. final thoughts. What uh, I'm gonna go hit um, 
I'm going to go hit 50 squat cleans at 225 every minute on the minute, five burpees. You didn't do that yesterday? No, I didn't have time, man. We hit the gym. We hit like two extra workouts at the gym. You going to do that outside? Yeah. I'm going to try and do... That's gross. I'm going to try and do a lot of stuff outside in the sun. Yeah, you should. Yeah, that's, that's, gonna, that's a tough workout. Yeah. I might not have enough matting, though, so I might just do five in burpees in place. Get your shit to the yeah. gym, man. Let's go. Yeah, I'll, if I can do it here, I'll do it here, which I can. But there's you haven't programmed anything yet that I had to be at the gym. So... Like All right, go hit out. it. Yeah, Let me go. know how it goes. Okay, I'll text you after. Peace. See ya. Bye, guys.